All right, there we go. Uh, great. So actually, before uh, before I go into uh, my slides here, uh, can you guys just take a look? Can everyone take a look here down below in the uh, the text chat? Uh, and just go ahead, type in where you're from, what country you're from. So I'm I'm from the USA. If you're uh, from Brazil, just go ahead and type that in. See UK, Chile, South Africa. Wow, we got people from all over the all over the world. Turkey. Belarus, Indonesia. Very good. Um, and also in the reactions, if you can see right down below uh, in the reactions, you got the thumbs up and you've also got the hand clap. Can you guys give me a quick thumbs up if you can hear me okay? Wow, this is so cool. We got people from all over the world. This is great. Excellent. Thank you, Jacqueline. Paul, thank you very much. Okay, very good. <laughs> Excellent. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start up now. Um, and uh, for, for me, I think it's uh, it's quite difficult for me to actually see everybody uh, at this time here, but uh, if you could just give me a, a thumbs up here if you can actually see the uh, my screen. Uh, and if you're having any trouble, please let me know. But uh, all right, so great. My name is John and uh, I have a, uh, a, a, that's actually a YouTube channel right now. It's called Education Solutions Online. And in today's short presentation, I would like to talk about two platforms. One is called Padlet and the other one is called Google Jamboard. Now, before I get into the actual uh, ways that you can use this in your classroom, uh, I would like to, first of all, just kind of go through. Let's see here. Um, is, is everyone familiar with or have you at least heard of CLIL? So if you have, uh, can you give me a thumbs up or, or tell me in the in the text chat? down below if you've heard of CLIL. I see we got some people still posting where they're from here. Um, great, so yes, okay, <laughs> I got one person said yes. So yeah, so CLIL is Content and Language Integrated Learning. And I teach quite a few classes at, at uh, um, a couple different universities. And many of those classes are focused on CLIL. And so you got this overarching uh, communicative language teaching and it kind of branches out, and with CLIL, it's it's sort of tied together. Um, you'll you'll hear it not necessarily um, uh, said interchangeably with task-based language teaching, but you'll hear it come up quite a bit. You'll hear CLIL and TBLT come up quite a bit here. So um, with uh, with CLIL, uh, one thing that uh, that that really comes up here that you'll probably, uh, I'm sure, a lot of the educators in here are familiar with, with uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Um, we've got the lower order thinking skills and the higher order thinking skills, the lots and the hots. Now the two platforms that I'm focusing on tonight or today is, um, is on the lower order thinking skills, remembering, understanding and applying here. Um, and so this can also be set up for Bloom's digital taxonomy as well. So uh, as, as we go into these, I want you to kind of keep in mind uh, the, the lower order thinking skills that, that we're going to be focused on, remembering um, some of the other, the other speakers, um, uh, Josh and, and Oliver were talking about um, remembering uh, your vocabulary words. And, and, um, and so I'm going to go into where we're actually talking about the, the understanding part of this here. Now, um, when you focus on a CLIL, uh, a unit, or if you're going for just like a single one-off lesson, um, what you'd want to do first is you're going to look at what's called the four C's. We got the content, communication, cognitive, and culture. Now, in this particular one here, we're focusing on the communication part of it. We're introducing the language that you would need to understand for a particular unit here. And once you've introduced your vocabulary for the unit, um, then I like to get a feel for what the students know already about this unit here. And if they don't know anything about it, then that's my chance. It's like my teachable moment for them. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to introduce uh, one thing that you can do with Padlet. And Padlet is a, uh, I think it's called a freemium app. Um, and that means that you can, uh, I think you can use up to six, it might be eight now, Padlets uh, for free. And if you pay for it, I believe it's around $85 uh, US, uh, then you can get unlimited Padlets here. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you some of the things that I've done here. Um, I'll, I'll actually jump out of the presentation in a moment here and actually show you what this one looks like. 
Um, one unit that I was teaching was about fashion trends. So on, um, on my fashion trends here, uh, I was introducing, I, I was saying, saying to my students, well, what do you know about the, the fashions from the 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up to present day here? So I was able to share a Padlet with them, a timeline, and I placed in certain decades. And then the students had to open up the Padlet, and then they had to do a quick web search. And I'll show you exactly how we can do that, post in a picture, and then give a short description. So that way we start to understand, like a basic understanding of uh, of the unit at hand here. Now, another one that I teach, another another course that I teach is on financial literacy. And to introduce the class, uh, I wanted my students to start thinking about the end goal. So where do they want to live when they're ready to retire? And, uh, and in this Padlet here, they can, uh, once they have the link, then they can choose, they can drop a pin anywhere in the world, and then they can do a quick web search, they can bring up a picture and then give a short description here. Uh, and I'll show you in just a moment what we can do uh, with, um, with that map here. Now, uh, another one with the, the financial literacy uh, CLIL class that I'm teaching, uh, you can also do a, I think this is called the shelf. So you put up the, the, um, the questions at the top, you give your students uh, questions, and then they have to post and you can see them posting. It used to be you could see them typing in real time. Uh, but now it's just they once they post, then you can see who the student is. And then um, this really gets them thinking about the um, this really gets them thinking about the um, uh, uh, the uh, the lesson at hand here. Um, great. So that is uh, Padlet. I'll, I'll go and show you a little bit about that very soon here. And then the next one is Jamboard. And with uh, with Jamboard. This is a um, this is free as long as you have a Gmail account. So once you set up your Gmail account, um, you can get your students to you can use it either for collaboration. So you can have all of your students working together at once, or you can also uh, use it as a presentation for uh, from the uh, from the teacher's perspective. So there's a there's um, many different ways that you can use this, and I'll take a, a I want to say a deep dive, but. Um, I'll show you a few different ways that we can actually use this one here uh, with your with your class. So I'll jump out of here, and I would like to bring up uh, the first one. So the first one that I talked about was Padlet, and this is what it looks like right here. And so you've got right here, I've got the three things that I was showing you with the Padlet. You would want to uh, make a new Padlet if you go to this website here, this uh, Padlet.com. And uh, the first one that I showed you was the timeline. So this is a timeline right here. And maybe you can start to think of different ideas. I, I used fashion trends, but you could use movies. There's, there's a lot of different uh, ways that you could use this one here with the timeline. Um, and it's a great way to get your students to collaborate and, and have everybody working together. Uh, we've got the map right here. So maybe you have some other good ideas. I, I use this one to have my students think about where do they want to retire. Um, and, uh, and I had them pick out a pin on or a place in, in the world and drop a pin. And, and I'll show you how exactly we can, um, we can work with this one here. And then finally, I showed you the shelf. And this is one where you stack uh, questions up and then your students will start to answer those questions here. So you've got everybody working together. This works really well if you're on Zoom. Uh, and I found that it also works uh, quite well if you're in a uh, in a face to face classroom, and maybe some of you even have students who are working in like a hybrid style. Um, so it's a really good way to, to get your students connected. Now, if I come through here, so this is the actual uh, fashion, uh, fashion trends timeline that I showed you earlier. Um, if you were to let's see if I come over to uh, where in the world. So what you would do first is once you um, let's say I'll, I'll use the uh, the map, for example, here. And, uh, and on the map, uh, I've got this plus sign right here. So if you hit this plus sign, um, then you can pick out a location. So let's say if, uh, if you were to, to take out Orlando, Florida, for example, this is going to pick up. Uh, you'd want to drop in. There's a, an image search. So you can drop in an image search. You can throw in a, a YouTube video if you wanted to. So you'd pick out one, um, one pin, and then you would type in your name, and this is where you would type. So you could give your brief 
description here about, about your area here. And then you can publish it and your student's gonna have a, a pin that's dropped here. So, um, and then the way that you get your students to, to understand how to do this or to be able to drop their own pins is you would come over to here where it says share and you would copy it to the link clipboard. And let's say, for example, if we are in a Zoom chat here, you can paste this up into, post it up into your Zoom chat. So if anybody sees this right here, if you can open that one up, we can start to have different people posting where they're actually from. I know that we have people from literally all over the world. This is awesome. Um, so if you want to go ahead and just type in your first name, um, and, uh, and that's just something to kind of play around with and get some ideas about how you can actually use Padlet. Um, now, the, I'm kind of going through this very quickly. I know I've only got a few minutes left. But uh, the next one, I see we got a few people typing in here already. I think you can, as long as my screen is still being shared here, uh, hopefully everyone can see this. Uh, you can see that someone is actually typing at that point. Now, as you're typing, I'll, I'll jump back to that later. Um, but I'm going to go over now to, um, to Jamboard. Now, Jamboard um, is, like I said, it's a free uh, it's a free service that you can use as long as you have a Gmail account. Now, what comes up here first is you've just got this blank, looks like a whiteboard right here. Now, you can present if you want to. Uh, if you're in a Google meeting, you can present right there. Or you can just share your screen like I'm sharing my screen right now. Now, what, uh, what we have on the left-hand side, we've got a pen tool. So you can, of course, draw on, uh, on this thing here. Um, as soon as if it's something that you didn't want on there, you can clear out the frame. And you've got some really very basic uh, tools that uh, you can see. It looks like my, my screen's, uh, there we go. Uh, you got some very basic tools. You can either clear it out or you can erase it. Uh, you can select things. Um, and you can add up sticky notes as well. This is another one that I really like um, to, uh, to add any kind of a note right here. And you can see is this, uh, as you type, uh, this is how much space. Uh, this is uh, kind of how much space you have to type. Okay, as this uh, kind of bar goes up here, and then you can save that one up. It's got a quick sticky note here. Now I'll show you um, an another one here. We've got our add image, so you can do a quick Google image search right here. I mentioned Orlando, Florida. Okay, so you can add in any kind of a Google image search, have people drop in an image, have your students drop in an image, and then they can use a text box here to describe it once it drops in. And then here is where you type. Okay, um, so that is just a very quick brief overview right here because I've only got a couple minutes left. Um, now I've got one that, uh, that I've got uh, for this for this particular uh, talk here, and let's say if your your unit was uh, if you're talking about for example, uh, if we were talking about um, SDGs like the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, and you wanted to get your students thinking about renewable energy, you can actually set them up with uh, their own Jamboard, and you can have them do this for homework if you wanted to. You type in, in the middle here, all I did was take a text box and, um, and I took my, my text box and I typed in renewable energy. And then um, you can either have your students collaborate on this at the same time in real time here, um, or you can just type on this as a teacher. Uh, this is another one here. I actually got this idea from another, uh, from another YouTuber, um, pocket full of primary. Um, she's got some great stuff. Uh, four corners here. So what are four types of renewable energy? Label each rectangle, find a picture, and give a brief description. So you're probably thinking, how do I get my students to actually type on this thing? Well, you'd come up here to where it says share. And once it comes up here to where it says share, um, it says it's restricted. But you would say that anyone with a link right now is a viewer, but you could set anyone with a link as an editor. And that way, anybody that has this link will be able to edit this. They'll be able to type on, on top of it. Now, if you got someone that was typing things that, they, that you didn't really like, you didn't want them typing that, at any time, you could come over here and you could change this from anyone is an editor to anyone is a viewer. And that will cut, it, that will cut your students off uh, uh, immediately right there. Um, so this is kind of getting them thinking about 
um, for, for in this particular case, it's um, sustainable development goals. Now, um, once they understand the, the basis of what your, your CLIL lesson is, that's when you can start to go into the higher order thinking skills and they're actually creating something here. So now they know, okay, I know about renewable energy and now I dive deep into it and I say, okay, these are the different sustainable development goals. And then now they have to create something and they have to, to really dive deep and analyze what they're trying to do here. Um, so Jamboard and Padlet are some really good ways to get your students just to start thinking about um, your, your lesson or your unit plan here. Um, and just kind of one last thing here, if anyone's using Google Classroom, um, what you can do here is you can, uh, I took that, this Jamboard that I've got right here. So this one, um, and I wanted all of my students to be able to uh, uh, make a copy of it so that they can do this for homework. So I set up an assignment for, for them. I said, open up the Jamboard and submit your answers. So I have this saved in my Google Drive. So once you have this in your Google Drive, then you would pick this one out, uh, this one that you just created. I got my uh, technology uh, in language teaching right here. And I uh, picked that one out and I've set it for each one of the students. I could assign this to my students and all of them would have their own Jamboard to be able to work on. And then they can submit it for homework here. So again, this is a way to get them uh, uh, just to briefly understand um, about your, your lesson plans. I'm sure there's actually ways that you can use Padlet and, and Jamboard uh, for higher order thinking skills. But for me personally, this is, these are some two ways that I uh, prefer to use it here. Um, so both of them I, I highly recommend, um, but uh, you know, Jamboard is definitely the, the, the free option right here. So if you have any other questions that come up here, I would be more than happy to, uh, to answer them as long as I know an answer to it um, at the end of this talk here. So uh, Paul, do you know how much time I have left? Not quite sure here. Uh, about one minute. So okay, about one more minute. In the chat, yeah, now would be a good time to answer them. Okay, yeah, sounds great. Um, so I've got one here. Uh, it says if you add your Google Sites Classroom to a Google Analytics account, you get some nice stats on your learner engagement. Very cool. 